George Santos will not be seeking re-election after the findings that came out today, which means we can fully expect George Santos to seek re-election because the guy has never told the truth. You thought the Freedom Corner group had a rough night last night. Now they are going to deal with the fact that one of the people in Congress who actually showed up to support them is going through some stuff. Now, we are going to go through some of the documents, but there is so much here that I just want to talk about some of the highlights. I want to begin off with saying there are text messages coming out about how George Santos's staff was talking about, you know how they were putting food outside of his office periodically? They wanted to possibly bug that table to try to find out what the media already knew. There was talk of trying to get some sort of mobility approval so that George Santos could use a segue in the hallways of Congress. Of course, George Santos made the now famous lies about being the grandson of a Holocaust survivor, lied about his degree, lied about working history such as working at Goldman Sachs, lied that he owned multiple properties, lied that he received a multi-million dollar trust fund, and of course lied that his mother died due to 9-11. He used campaign money to travel to a spa for Botox to Vegas, and more. He made a company in Florida, which his campaign paid into for consulting that never happened. George Santos put over $200,000 from that company into his personal account. He did the same thing again, but this time he sent donor money there and used that money for things like OnlyFans, Hermes, and to pay George Santos' debts. He claimed he was a successful businessman, but was actually in debt with terrible credit. He claimed he had a salary of $55,000 when it was really just $27,500 and some. He lied about half a million dollar apartment. He lied about a checking account with over $100,000. He lied about a savings account with over a million dollars and lied about being an owner of an organization worth a million dollars. He claimed to own 13 Florida properties. He owns none. He told his campaign he owned a Maserati. He actually owns a Kia Sportage. The treasurer, who pled guilty to the crimes, admits she worked with George Santos to make the false reports, and he knew about all the fraud. He lied that he gave his campaign almost $800,000 to trick people into donating. He paid himself $31,200 back in loan repayments for the loan that never existed. George Santos appears to work with another individual to get over $800,000 into his campaign. This is being sent to, uh, for prosecution possibly, because this is a crime to go past individual limits. They haven't named the individual, I'm really curious. And he spent campaign money at Farmago, cash with ATMs, paid rent with campaign money, and even took money out at a casino. With all that being said, here is the committee document, it's very short. And it's pursuant, da, 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 the findings. On November 14, 2023, the committee unanimously voted to adopt the report of the uh, investigative subcommittee. Uh, here we go. The representative of George Santos sought to fraudulently exploit every aspect of his House candidacy for his own personal financial profit. He blatantly stole from his campaign. He deceived donors in uh, providing what they thought were contributions to his campaign when they, in fact, payments for his personal benefit. He reported fictitious loans to his political committees to induce donors and party committee to make further contributions to his campaign, then diverted more campaign money to himself as purported repayments of those fictitious loans. He used his connections to high-value donors and other political campaigns to obtain additional funds for himself through fraudulent or otherwise questionable business, de business dealings. And he sustained all this through a constant series of lies to his constituents, donors, and staff about his background and uh, experience. There's a lot here. You can go through it. I'll have this in the pinned comment. It's eight pages. This one here. You're probably looking, who picked this image? This report, from my understanding, is from George Santos' own staff. Um, I'll have this one in the pinned comments. You want to see? There's a little bit here. They had a few things that they were worried about. There were there were just a few things that they thought might be a problem. Just 164 pages worth. This is the full report. It's 56 pages long, and I'll have that in the pinned comment, but we're gonna go down to page 35. You'll see there's a lot we're skipping. The reason we're going to 35 is I think it's the one that most people actually find interesting being read. And if you get to the end of page 35, we're going to have this here. On October 21st, 2022, Redstone's bank account received a $25,000 wire from an account affiliated with Contributor 2. 
From there, $25,000 was transferred from Redstone's account to Representative Santos' personal bank account. On October 26, 2022, Redstone's bank account received a $25,000 wire from an account affiliated with Contributor 1. On the same date, $25,000 was transferred from Redstone to a different personal checking account owned by Representative Santos. After $50,000 from Redstone was deposited into Representative Santos' personal accounts, the funds were used, among other things, to pay down personal credit card bills and debt, make a $4,127.80 purchase at Hermes, and for smaller purchases at only fans. Yes. Sephora, and for meals and parking, the ISC did not find evidence showing that the contribution received from contributors 1 and 2 were used to support Representative Santos's candidacy. In addition, a senior manager of Representative uh, Santos's campaign staff told the ISC the only independent expenditure that was helping the campaign was the NRCC doing their thing that they would for young guns, but I don't recall Redstone strategies. And there's so much in here. This is just so jam-packed that I don't have the time to read through all 56 pages of this, 100 plus pages of his own people calling him out. There's a lot. People are going to be going through this for a long time. And the question now is, will he be expelled? Many of the people that voted to not expel him said, the moment there's proof, the ethics committee gets back to him, they'll vote to him to be expelled. And we have multiple saying that. So we'll see. I guess if he gets expelled, he'll have more time to stand on the Freedom Corner.